The Star Wars prequel trilogy ends with Palpatine wiping out the Jedi Knights with Order 66 and the ensuring Jedi Purge, but his galaxy-wide genocide could have been enacted without the infamous Order. In addition to being the galaxy's deadliest Sith Lord, Palpatine is also one of the Star Wars saga's most ruthless Machiavellian manipulators, tricking nearly the entire galaxy into participating in phony conflicts and orchestrating a horrific coup d'état that resulted in the Galactic Empire. The Jedi Knights were nearly destroyed, but the Star Wars prequels prove the importance of both Order 66 and the corruption of Anakin Skywalker to this plot. If Order 66 was impossible to employ, however, Palpatine could attempt to achieve his goals through other methods. The Republic's clone troopers are tragically instrumental to Palpatine's success in the prequel era. Despite the friendships formed between the clones and their Jedi leaders in both canon and legends, their ultimate purpose was to gain the trust of the Jedi and murder them when the time was right. Once Order 66 is issued, dormant brainwashing in the clones is activated, compelling them to murder the Jedi and support Palpatine as he transitions from Supreme Chancellor to Emperor. By the start of A New Hope, the clones had played their role and had long since been replaced by the fanatic recruits of the Imperial Stormtrooper Corps and Imperial Army. In both continuities, some clones redeemed themselves and joined the rebellion, finally fighting for a faction that aligned with their ideology. In a scenario where the Galactic Republic didn't use a clone army, Palpatine likely wouldn't be able to implement Order 66 or a functional equivalent, but this doesn't mean he couldn't still wipe out the Jedi and establish the Galactic Empire. Despite his megalomania, Palpatine is a brilliant schemer who is demonstrably capable of adjusting his plans when needed or employing backup options. In an alternate Star Wars prequel era in which Order 66 is not possible, Palpatine would, in a chillingly realistic fashion, manipulate the Republic populace to turn against the Jedi, imitating the galaxy-wide pogrom and removing the greatest obstacle to his autocratic rule. How Palpatine could kill the Jedi without Order 66 The Galactic Republic lacked a legitimate military following the seeming destruction of the Sith Order. A bare-bones defense force known as the Judicial Forces protected the Republic to a limited degree, and local planetary militias would defend their respective worlds with Republic backing. Following the invasion of Naboo and the subsequent separatist crisis, Republic politicians were divided on the matter of creating a true Republic military, but they abruptly received one in the form of the clone troopers just as their war with the separatists began. In this alternate version of the Star Wars saga, the Republic strongly considers building a military force following the Trade Federation's defeat on Naboo and definitively creates one at the start of the separatist crisis. Comprised of recruits, the Galactic Republic's military would be a credible threat to the Separatists, escalating tensions between the two factions and saving both Palpatine and Count Dooku the trouble of recruiting and cloning Jango Fett. However, having a Republic military creates a problem for Palpatine and Dooku, as it prevents Order 66 from being implemented. Why Order 66 couldn't happen without clone troopers One of the key functions of clone troopers in Palpatine's plot is their dormant brainwashing, which makes them the perfect assassins when the Jedi Purge begins. In canon, the brainwashing is explained in detail through the clone's control chip implants, while Legends is vaguer about it, implying that an extremely potent form of indoctrination is used on clones to ensure their compliance with the Order. The result is the same in both continuities, with the clones forming genuine friendships with the Jedi, thus earning their trust, and their lack of malice when executing the Order makes their betrayal even more difficult for the Jedi to detect until it's too late. 
brainwashing all branches of the Republic military wouldn't be impossible for Palpatine, but keeping it secret would be another matter. It would be almost impossible to hide signs of a brain implant for all military personnel, and the Legends version of clone brainwashing is likely facilitated by the clone's birth and upbringing in an advanced military facility on Kamino. Although Palpatine successfully hid the Super Star Destroyer Lusankya on Coruscant for years in the Legends continuity, brainwashing the entire Republic military would still be all but impossible for him. The Clone Wars would have lasted much longer than three years a recruited Republic military would affect more than just Order 66. The Republic recruits would certainly be well trained and well equipped, but they still wouldn't be nearly as formidable as clone troopers, who are among the galaxy's finest warriors. The clone army is relatively small, especially for a galactic scale conflict, but their primary function was backing up the Jedi and fighting the most brutal battles in the Clone Wars, using their skill to make up for their relatively few numbers. A recruited Republic military, even if it's significantly larger than the Clone Army, would struggle against the overwhelming numbers of the Separatist droids, making the Clone Wars last far longer than three years. However, this gives Palpatine more time to enact the slower process of turning the galaxy against the Jedi. Palpatine's position as Chancellor could have helped turn the public against the Jedi in both canon and legends. Anti-Jedi prejudice existed, even within the Republic, long before the Clone Wars, which Palpatine would rely on in lieu of Order 66. As a prospective dictator, Palpatine would be all too aware of how effective bigotry is at manipulating ordinary beings into committing atrocities, and while Palpatine would certainly orchestrate events to frame the Jedi as untrustworthy and villainous in the eyes of the Republic citizenry, he likely wouldn't need to push too much to scapegoat the Jedi Order. Turning Republic citizens and the Republic military itself against the Jedi would be a slightly slower process, and the Jedi Purge would take far longer to destroy the Order than Order 66, even with Anakin becoming Darth Vader, but Palpatine would achieve his sinister goal in the end. What would Star Wars look like without Order 66? Although the fall of Anakin Skywalker and the rise of the Galactic Empire would be relatively unchanged by this Order 66 free version of the Star Wars prequels, Luke and Leia might be raised in secret by Padme for years before Palpatine's coup. This might even result in the two forming the Rebellion together, though perhaps they wouldn't train as Jedi until adulthood. Thanks to Palpatine's manipulation of the Republic citizenry's bigotry, it may be difficult for the New Republic to convince its populace to trust the Jedi again following the fall of Palpatine's regime. Palpatine could wipe out the Jedi with or without Order 66 in the Star Wars prequel era, but its absence would force him to use a more chillingly realistic alternative method of dictatorship to destroy the Jedi Order. Key release dates Rogue Squadron release date, the 22nd of December 2023.